Good morning everyone. It is Tuesday and I've already had a good morning so far. So I went for a walk this morning at 5.15 a.m. and it was really lovely. The weather was gorgeous and I had such a great time. It was just beautiful. I'll insert some clips just so that you can see how gorgeous it was. And today I'm actually going to take you through my planning process for the rest of the year because we are approaching the second half of the year and so I just thought that we could plan the next six months together. Good evening everyone. It is much later on in the day. It just ended up being a really busy day, but I am determined to plan the next six months and get this done. So we are gonna do that now. I've had a great productive day and I'm just excited to kind of get stuck into planning and to share you what my process is like. So we are going to plan the next six months. The first thing that we're going to do is actually do a review of the past six months. I th I'm a firm believer that before you can move forward, you kind of need to look back and reflect on what has worked, what hasn't worked, and kind of just take some learnings from that. So I'm going to do that now and I will share with you some questions that I asked myself. finished doing my review of the past six months I found that actually very therapeutic I find it really nice to be able to write down your th my thoughts I don't know about any of you guys but when I write things down it just helps to make things clearer and I just like to get it out of my head so I asked myself a few questions, which I'm going to share with you right now. The first one was, what goals did I have? So I'm not sure if I've mentioned this to you before, but my, one of my words for this year is visibility. So all of the goals that I have for my business are tied into visibility. The first one was to start posting three times a week on LinkedIn and just to get active on there, because that's one of the platforms that I want to be focusing on. The next one was to launch my YouTube channel. And then after it, it was to book more speaking engagements so that I can get in front of new audiences and connect with people in person. Another goal was to book one guest podcast a month. So in the past six months, the the goal was to book six podcasts if that was once a month and the last one was to attend at least two networking events every month now the next question that i asked myself was am i on my way to achieving the goals so just to give you some context the first half of the year was very different to what I expected it to be and the reason being is I had some health challenges so I was smashing my goals um I booked a speaking engagement at the beginning of the year where I was leading a networking workshop which I shared in one of my previous vlogs and I also booked a couple of guest podcast episodes and so I was on a roll and then I had some health challenges. So that kind of threw me off. So the first half of the year was 
completely different to what I expected it. But one thing that I learned was that's okay. <laughs> we can make plans. I say this to my clients all the time. We can create a strategy, but life will always throw curveballs. And so we need to be prepared to adjust, to pivot and figure out, okay, that's okay. Um, we have to adjust, but how are we going to still achieve this goal? So the reason why I encourage doing a review of your past six months when you're going to be planning the next six months is because sometimes you may feel like you have failed at your goals, but until you actually sit down and review, you might you will realise that, oh, actually, I'm doing better than I thought because I did this exercise it gave me clarity on what I have achieved and I felt proud considering all that I've been through in the past four months, especially, my result was great. So I launched my YouTube channel and that's why you can watch me now. I started posting on LinkedIn three times a week and I've been consistent with that as well. Now, one thing to note, I did launch my YouTube channel way later than planned. I planned on launching it at the beginning of the year, but I launched it a month ago. And that's okay. I've still achieved the goal. Um, it was beyond my control. So I'm not mad at myself. I'm proud of myself. I still managed to achieve that. And the same with LinkedIn. I started posting, I think about, it's been about five or six weeks. So I started posting on LinkedIn just before I launched my YouTube channel. And I've been consistent with it there are certain things that i want to start actioning when it comes to my linkedin but i'm proud of the progress that i've done so far another thing that i have achieved is i booked some speaking engagements not as many as i would have liked but it was due to the fact that i had health challenges so i was able to do the workshop and i also was invited for a panel event and both of those experiences were great. I really enjoyed them and I want to book more speaking engagements. So far, I have booked four guest podcast interviews. I've recorded three. I've got one more to record. So I haven't booked the six that I had planned, but I'm still proud of myself anyway. It's, it's progress. Jenna Kutcher always says, done is better than perfect. And so... I'm just glad that I've actually booked some and the plan is to ramp that up. Now, I started off well when it came to networking events, but um, that has not gone as well recently. So that's something that I want to pick up for the second half of the year. I want to attend more networking events. I love connecting with people and with the networking events that I did attend, I connected with a lot of people who I still speak to now and I've just realised how much I appreciate in-person events and how much I've missed it. We got so used to just being online with COVID and that has served its purpose and um, it was great and I'm always connecting with people online but there's nothing beats connecting with people in, in person, that's what I think anyway. So the next question that I asked myself is what went well in my business in the past six months? And I would say the highlights are I launched my YouTube channel. I started posting on re regularly on LinkedIn and engaging with people on that platform. I booked speaking engagements, which I really enjoyed. And that was great connecting with the audiences for, for those events. And... As a result of me doing all these visibility tasks, I started speaking more on my stories as well. Um, so I think all of those things have been great. As I've mentioned already, I had health challenges, so that really slowed me down. But one great thing that came out of that is it allowed me to just slow down and as a result, my brain just got sharper. I had so many creative ideas. 
I had so many strategic ideas that came to me about the business. I just have found a new excitement about the business, about the clients that I serve, about what I want to offer. And it, th there's power in slowing down. That's what it's shown me. And so even though it wasn't something that was planned, I think it has been really beneficial. And it's just reminded me the importance of looking after yourself and not pushing yourself to the ground despite the challenges. And because I have a newfound energy and excitement, I am so excited for the next six months. I am really excited to see what I'm going to achieve and I can't wait for us to discuss at the end of December. I can't wait, can't wait to share what the next six months has, has been like. Because of the kind of year that I had, I actually wouldn't do anything differently. I think I did exactly what I needed to do. I was right where I needed to be. I slowed down and because of that, it set me up to have a stronger second half of the year. And so I'm going to challenge you all to, yeah, make a note of all these questions and review your past six months. Once I've reviewed my goals from the past six months, I like to look forward and think about what success looks like in the next six, six months at the end of the year. What goals do I want to have achieved by then? Because that will help me to revisit my goals and to amend any that need to be tweaked. I recommend creating three to four goals maximum. You might have some goals from the past six months that you haven't fully achieved yet. So you can keep them on there and you might have some that you've ticked off already. Whatever your goals are should dictate what things you choose to pursue over the next six months. So I'm about to write on my wall planner and the first thing I start with when I'm planning the next six months is from a personal perspective. So key dates, any birthdays, any anniversaries, if there's any events or conferences at church, any holidays or long weekends, that kind of thing. I start looking at that now. I'm a firm believer that we should schedule, we need to schedule everything. So if I have a CEO weekend or week, I would write that in at this stage. The reason I do this is because when I go to now plan what I want to do, I want to make sure that I have blocked out all those personal times because it's very important if for example there's a holiday or time with family friends that kind of thing it's really important we block it out i always say that if it's not in the calendar it's not happening and so the reason why i decide to do the personal stuff first is because we need to prioritize that as much as we may have our businesses we also have lives and there's no point in building a business and then you have no one <laughs> to enjoy life with. Also, it's just important so that we don't get burnt out. So it's very important that you look at the next six months and think, when do I want to take time off with my family, with my friends, with my loved ones? I would recommend getting a few different coloured pens and then assigning a colour to each category. Also, <laughs> ignore this funny angle it's the best way for me to be able to show you everything i'm gonna put you on a time lapse now as i write everything down the next thing that i'm going to do is plot out any launches that i have so whether it's a new service that i'm offering or just a launch of anything so yeah just plot those out as well and whilst i'm doing that i'm also going to plot out any client 
meetings as well. One thing that I will also recommend you add onto your calendar is if there are any networking events that you want to attend, I would recommend that you make a note of them and you add them. So that's something I'm not going to do it now because there's quite a few. So I need to gather the information. So I would actually encourage you to gather the information so that you have it to hand so that when you are plotting everything out you can just add it straight away then at least you know when you've got networking events and you can plan things accordingly the thing that i do is i collect my clients birthdays um and so that's something that i will add to the calendar as well so if that's something that you do add it to your calendar so that you have a reminder of when their birthdays are and if you want to do anything for them you can plot it out in your calendar when you need to send things out to them now the next thing that i'm going to plot in is any personal projects which i need to start by a certain point so there's certain things certain goals that i have certain things that i will be sharing with you once they're up and running and i need to plot them out so that i just as a reminder that you need to start this. going to add is any kind of key marketing dates so if there are any launches or plans that I have for later on in the year just kind of mapping out when I need to start creating the marketing materials um, whether it's for social media um, yeah just different parts of social media even for my youtube channel just whenever i need to just start thinking about creating content so the brainstorming the actual creating of the content and when i actually need to start putting it out so i'll start plotting that out just so that i have an idea of when i need to start thinking of things so for example i might have something that i'm going to launch in november and i need to start planning everything in July for example and then I might start slowly sharing content from August so I'm just slowly sharing content but yeah this is just to have an overview and an idea of okay what things should I start thinking about when it comes to brainstorming and when do I actually need to start creating the materials required um the same thing if I've got a project that needs to be done like there's a project that I'm, I've got to work on where I've got to film some content I've got to create some materials and so I need to map that out so that's pretty much how I kind of plot everything out onto my wall planner. Just to recap, I start with number one, key dates, birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. So any kind of key dates that you already know about. Number two is any launches. So new services or products or even longer projects where you're going to end up launching something at the end. Number three, business or networking events. So if you have the dates already, just plot them out. That's really helpful for anyone who has a YouTube channel because then you can also plan your content around these events as well. Number four is client birthdays. So if you collect your client birthdays, plot them out in your calendar. Number five is any personal projects. 
And number six is any key marketing dates. So this is tying in with your launches, your new products or services. So reverse engineer and figure out when you need to start creating your marketing materials and when you actually need to start promoting them. I hope that this has been very helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you've managed to make it to the end of this video, I want you to drop a raised hands emoji in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already and share with anyone who you think will enjoy. Until next week, I'll see you then. So have a great week. Bye.